What's that as far as the comparison to the computer? Or? Yeah. So the the nozzle is going to be a little bit. Uh, the nozzle is going to be a little bit cooler than the heater block. So the thermistor is going to read higher than. Yeah, the thermistor is not going to be. It's going to read a little higher than what the nozzle is. So the question is, where do you want it? Mm. Do you want? No, it's definitely climbing. Do you want the? So now it's actually switched off, so it's going to go back down. Oh, okay. So once it climbs above that blue line. Yeah, yeah, the blue line is the target. Mm -hmm. That blue line's what, 210, 220? Right. Oh, I see. Yeah, Target so you, temperature. Yeah, you said what that is. And that was what, about 10 degrees cooler? Uh, not, it was it was less than that. So. Oh. so you may end up needing to run this at 230. Okay. That may be your magic temperature. So now it's going to drift back below 220, and then it'll, you'll hear the relay work by, and you hear the relay board kick back in. Mm -hmm. And I'll turn it back on. This roller coastering is controlled. Their setter, their settings on the extruder. That you can tell it. This onboard preferences here. You can edit extruder parameters. And there's two things that control how it determines what the temperature is. One is these thermistor settings, mm. and also these PID settings. These are off, so we're going to change this. So, preliminary plastic shooter Mark V pit settings. And those are going to be parameters to tweak around with for a while? Yeah, basically, you can tweak these. Um, to sort of control. And so what's now, the motor speed itself? That's how fast it can, how fast it spins the extruder motor. Okay. So this guy here. All right. And that's pulling down the plastic. Mm -hmm. Actually, in this case, it's pushing. But. Oh. And you can see here that light there. These are the MOSFETs. So those are the switches. And these lights turn on and off. So when that that light is on, so right now it's driving the heater. Okay. So it's switching on and off to control the heater. Then you can save all this as a profile somewhere. Or? The the PID settings are actually on. Okay. They're they're actually set in this chip, so they'll stay. Mm -hmm. and, and basically, each extruder is slightly different. Right. So. Although the Mark Fives seem to be a lot more consistent than the Mark Fours were, okay. so that's one of the advantages of having the Mark Five. And be, earlier, you had said some people are actually encasing these walls here to give a more consistent heat environment. Yeah. That's a very gratifying sound right there. So you can see the the the, the bearing. All right. There. So that's going forward. Put some plastic through. So the plastic goes through the hole in the top. Mm -hmm. It goes down into the oh. Yeah, it might be a little tight. No, it's very loose. Oh. And have you found a pretty good tension as far as that goes? Just or crank it down pretty tight. Oh yeah. Finger yeah. tight. Is good. So, so you can see the plastic moving through. You can see the plastic pushing through the body there. Okay. Yep. So is that not moving at all, or? 
No, it's still moving. It just goes very slowly. Hmm. So one of the concerns I had is that slipping the bearing through all that plastic there, they drilled the holes. Oh, there we go. Oh, hey, look at that. That's going a little more slowly than I would expect, so. Let's bump up the temperature 10 degrees. Not the speed? No, the speed is at uh, is full throttle. Right. Oh. oh, no, it's not. 255, right? There we go. Very first print. <laughs> that plastic's probably pretty hot there too, huh? Wow. We call those Christmas trees. Oh, yeah. Nine hundred dollars right there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the second one only be four fifty. <laughs> and it gets cheaper from there. That's right. Let go of me. Sorry, you got a uh, you got a stringer. Sweet. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you very much. So it works. You put it together right. That's a relief. That's for damn sure. Oh uh, yeah, it's a lot of it's like sort of a lot of work without being able to test every step in the way. Yeah, that's that's true. So you'll end up you'll have to experiment. Obviously you'll need to replace that cable. Yeah. Uh, but you'll have to experiment with what the right temperature is. Okay. To get Prints to the consistency that you want. Um, 220, your extrude at 220, which is awesome. It's the first bot I've seen that will do that. So, you're at least in the right neighborhood. Cool. That's a pretty fine line. I doubt they could probably... Is there any talk about getting the extruder to go even finer than that? There are people who put thinner, uh, smaller gauge nozzles on it. Mm -hmm. And that will do it. Because this is what, three millimeters? One millimeter? No, probably 0.8. At least in my experience, these nozzles put out a 0.8 millimeter. Oh, you're, you're even finer. 0.5. So that's pretty good. Here you got there. I should have put me a couple rings so I can put that right on there. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. We can do that. My blender's pretty terrible, though. So I'll have to spend more time on the, uh, in the tutorials. Cool. So pull down or power down, I guess. Yeah. Oh, Oops. hint. See these these lights that are on. Yep. That means the stepper is engaged. And if Do you not feel move it. if you feel the stepper here, it's warm. Mm. If you leave it on like that too long, it'll get hot, too hot to touch. And okay. if you run it at that, you can damage it. Mm. So when you're done moving it, you want to hit disable here in the control panel. Mm -hmm. to disable the stepper controllers and then it'll cool down and, and then it's safe to move these around manually yes, otherwise right. it's not right, that's right. That's okay because right. I was concerned about that if we engage it you'll you'll have a hard time moving it actually okay because initially before I power put the power plugs in I just had the controllers in and I moved one of these and the light flickered on I was like oh it'll my god that. I no. just blew it out no. <laughs> it'll do that even with it disabled if you look at the top on there yeah yeah so that's normal. All right. I was that may be about that. That may be questionable our electronic design, uh -huh. but it's not <laughs> anything wrong. Okay. Cause I was surprised. There's no pa there's no power. There's no batteries. Ah, but, but there it is power. Lit up at me. Oh, you're, because I'm moving it. I'm generating. Spinning the motor. You're generating yeah. electricity. You're generating your voltage. That makes sense. So I'll definitely need a pair of tweezers to clean the nozzle off. Yes. Well, then, just to just to pull out your 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 stuff. And what was that flat thing with all the uh, things you had on there for? You're just using that to set the height of the extruder off of. I do two things oh. with this. This is just, just like a little frosting batter thingy, right? It's exactly what it is. Something that's somewhat flexible. Mm -hmm. And this happens to be about the layer height that I have set on this machine. 
So I use this as a gauge to set the height of the nozzle to start. Cool. Um, so it happens to work pretty well for that. Uh, so yes, a pair of tweezers is definitely useful. You want to get uh, you don't want to get super cheap tweezers because mm -hmm. they'll get all bent. And, yeah. But a relatively fine point is useful. But you don't want to get something where if you just put it down the wrong way, you end up bending it. Mm. Th these are pretty good. I think this is actually a um, Fillmore, which is a line that Fry's carries. Mm. Okay. Uh, and a lot of electronic stores do. But they... Um, you might find something at TRW for that, too. Totally. Easily. I got to do that trip next week. Yeah. So, let me plug the control panel here. One thing you'll notice is the the heater will take a long time to cool down to room temp. Okay. So I just kind of let it cool down to whatever. Um, so actually, when they showed the auto platform going on this, keeping this running for like 25 hours, or is it keeping it sitting that heats up the stepper motors? You know, I haven't had a problem with you know because they have that little heat shield that that they put on here mm. i haven't had a problem with it okay I, I haven't put it on there so i don't know how necessary it is one thing that some people are saying this motor is getting overheated mm. i put that plastic down there on the back yeah. supposedly the heat goes up from there but... right yeah so i don't know i mean it can't hurt but right. i don't know i just haven't it hasn't so... seemed necessary to me so with the plastic going through the top, there must be more than just a little goo stuck in the whole length, or? So the the nozzle, so down here, since the nozzle itself is only you know half a millimeter in diameter, mm. um, the the and the tube that's running up there is is a couple millimeters in diameter, even with the the Teflon inner tube. Uh, so when it gets down into here. Inside there, there's a reservoir of plastic. Okay. So when you push more in, it's basically pushing through the reservoir. Okay. So that's and that's why getting heated so it melts again anyway, yeah. so yeah. it's not a problem for exactly. gunking up. So what you'll find is ah, if, you, of maker body. if you transition <laughs> from black to white, it'll take you a long time. Oh, okay. It'll go through a lot of shades of gray on the way there. Okay. I'm just looking at this bucket of made. All right, so that's pretty much it for now. I'm going to do some more work on this at home.